81% of hacking related breaches are password related and many companies are still overlooking the importance of strong password security. Today we'll look at password spraying. What is it, how to detect it and how to prevent it in your organization. So stay tuned. Hi, it's Anthony from Black Peak Security, where we help you on your cyber journey. If you find this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really makes a huge difference. So let's jump in it. So what is password spraying? Password spraying is a form of brute force attack, but it's a bit different. Brute force attack relies on trying to figure out what the user password is by guessing it. So it tries thousands and millions of uh, combinations until it reaches the correct one. Now this can be countered easily by applying a lockout policy. For example, the account gets locked after three or five login attempts and, and then that way the brute force attack cannot succeed. But by locking the account it does a form of denial of service, but, <laughs> but that's another topic. We're not discussing this right now. So how does password spraying differ from brute force? Well, it has a list of users and a list of simple passwords, and then it tries to authenticate with one password at a time for all users. In our example, uh, the attacker tries password one, two, three on these five users and then waits. He waits for some time so as not to trigger the lockout mechanism and then tries another password on all the users. Again, only once and then waits. Eventually, he'll guess some and since he hasn't triggered any lockouts, he might go undetected. However, you have the chance to detect him if you know what to look for and configure your tools properly. So let's see this in a practical example. So the setup is the following. We have a domain controller, we have a Windows 10 machine, and we have a Kali machine that's, uh, that's gonna be our attacker box. We also have the logging machine that's gonna log in all the event logs, security event logs, Sysmon, uh, Suricata logs, and everything basically in another machine that uh, obviously we're gonna analyze later on after the attack is done. So to start off, we're gonna look at this DC. We're gonna look for all the users that are active on the domain, uh, on the active directory. So we're gonna go to PowerShell, type in get user, filter all, not get user, get AD user. Okay, so that's everyone in here, but we don't want that. We, we only want to see the SAM account. So select SAM account name. Okay, so you see administrator, guest, default account, vagrant, whatever, whatever, and Nikki H. Those are the account names on the domain controller on the Active Directory. So let's go to our Kali machine and uh, see if we can break some of those passwords. So here's our Kali machine and I already pre-downloaded and configured a tool called Spray. Basically, this is a tool that sprays, that does password spraying as an attack. So what it needs is it needs a user list, which is over here. I prepared the Vagrant Administrator and Nikki H as the users. And it also needs a password.txt file, which is the one here. So I prepared it with very uh, generic. The idea is to, to have very generic passwords like Spring 2017, Vagrant, Book, whatever, Password123, all these things. Now, our machine sits on 56. 132 now that that's important to know and the dc is on dot 56 dot 102 remember those ips so and and here's the command we're going to sudo spray dot sh that's the the executable basically for 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 spray we're going to use the smb protocol that's the ip address we're giving it the username the text and we also need to specify the domain so this in this specific example the domain is windomain.local. So let's see what, what happens when we execute. Okay, we need to type in the password for Kali. Okay, this, this might take a while, so let's get back when this is done. Guys, if you like the video so far, give it a like and subscribe. So it took a while, but it's done now. So what happened? 
Well, basically we're spraying, we're saying that the tool is spraying all the passwords that we, we, we've given it here. So for example, he's spraying with spring 2017, all the accounts, all the accounts, the administrator, the Nikki H, I'm not sure why F Castle comes in. I think it's because I, yeah, yeah, because I used it before making the video in my tests on another uh, domain that's, uh, that's called Marvel. Well, whatever, ignore that for now. But basically it's using now the, the spring 2017 password and it's trying to spray it on, on all these usernames. And the idea is to spray it once and then wait a while so that it doesn't, so that the lockout policy doesn't get activated and, and lock us out and, and lock, lock those accounts out. See here it's using the vagrant password, which is our, our second password and so on. So here we are in our Splunk instance. Remember, after the attack is done, now we need to check and see what actually happened, what is logged. Now, since this is an active directory, and I prepared this Splunk instance so that all the logs come into Splunk and, and that we can analyze them. Um, so let's start off by going to the search and report. We're gonna search for this specific event and see if uh, anything comes up. So let's try and search for, so index. Uh -huh. Index, we're looking for the Windows event logs um, we don't want to search for the past 24 hours let's say let's say one hour ago okay some logs are coming up then we want we know that we targeted the DC so here is the DC let's put it in the filter Okay. Right. So now we're searching for the events that are associated with log on and log off events. Now, these are what's the number? 4625 and 4624. So that's 4625 is the failed login and the 4624 is the successful login basically. So let's search for those. So let's look at the the failed logons first, which is event code here, and that's 4625. Hold on. Hold on, let's let's type it here. So event code for 625. Okay, see how we see this spike here? I believe that this is our Kali machine, but let's see. Now we know, if you remember, I told you to remember the IP address of the Kali machine. Let's look at the source. Where is it? Source IP, ah, well 132, that's the Kali machine, okay. And here is a message, an account failed to log on. Account name is Vagrant. Workstation name is Kali. Okay, authentication package NTLM. Okay. Let's see the next one, administrator. That's the other account if you remember we had in our Kali machine. Workstation Kali. And that's another failed login. Okay, and now, Let's have a look at the successful logins, which is 4624. Okay. So what do we have as successful? Hold on. Let's put in the Kali IP address as a source because now we know that, right, that it's coming from this source and we want to see if the attack has succeeded. So source IP, see we have a lot of source IPs, but we want the 132. There you go. 
see we have two successes account name Nikki H and account name Vagrant Nikki H from the Kali machine there was a successful penetration of, of the password and Vagrant Vagrant again coming from the Kali machine NTLM so let's have a look at uh, Nikki's uh, password and see if we can log in now what we can see from the tool from the Kali machine is that the Nikki H user account is has the password of spring 2017 now let's see if we can uh, log into the machine with that password and that username so here is a Windows 10 machine it's uh, signing into the win domain domain and let's try the username so Nikki H with the password of spring 2017 that we found out from the Kali machine huh and we're logging in so let's see what comes up there you go so we logged into Nikki's machine and uh, what we're gonna do for fun just gonna change his desktop I know the guy so I'm sure that uh, that he'll love that looks like Lulin so so how do you prevent password spraying uh, well enable two-factor authentication is the first one it's always a good idea to enable multi-factor authentication to ensure that a password alone is not enough to gain access uh, to the account uh, if you want to be extra secure consider implementing technology that allows for biometric or voice activated authentication this could work carry out simulated attacks this will give you a better insight into your password security posture and your security posture overall use a uh, real-time auditing solution this basically uses machine learning techniques to detect and respond to anomalous events which might include multiple failed login attempts uh, use usernames that are different than names so what does that mean when the attacker does his research on the usernames they usually get them from the email address like if the email is john.do at companyx.com for example it makes sense to think that the username is a combination of the name like john d or do j or john.do so by making the usernames of the employees different than the name itself it makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out um, like it could be a number combination uh, username like John Doe could have an actual username uh, 55453 whatever JJ something obviously if the real usernames are already leaked and posted on a hacker forum somewhere then you know there's there's not much you can do there but you know you, you can make it you can make it difficult the idea is to make it as, as difficult as you can right then the next one is reduce your attack surface only expose the login interfaces that are absolutely necessary to the internet so for the login interfaces exposed make sure that they aren't vul vulnerable to username enumeration next one is improve password policy eight character minimums aren't enough so you need to make sure when you're watching this video you need to make sure uh, that you follow the good practices that there are at the time uh, for for password policies as a bonus to this video here is a list of mitigation steps that you can perform immediately after you get a trigger for a password spraying event it's not an extensive list but this is the least you can do so reset the credentials of the affected accounts implement the multi-factor authentication on all the external access systems and you need to block out the IP of the attacker so that's it for today guys I hope you liked the video and if you did make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel because it does make a difference for the YouTube algorithm. I was your host Anthony from Blackpeak Security. Ciao.